Thank you. All right, so this is my first time presenting with Zoom. So let me know if anything does not work. Okay. Everything is not working now. My exams slide, or the title slide. Okay, so uh, down there at the bottom is the URL, uh, short URL .at slash CWHS9. If you wanna follow along, it's a, it's a Google slideshow. Uh, so in some ways, uh, my presentation is gonna be different from uh, all Seaburgers quite a bit. A uh, few philosophical questions to start. You know, what are your goals? Um, what sort of learning experience do you want the students to have? How do you want them to show you what they've learned? How can we reduce testing anxiety? I think some of the things that Paul Seberger was talking about with the timed tests and the strict proctoring can definitely amp up testing anxiety. Um, and preventing cheating is a big deal. Uh, it's, I think, unavoidable uh, in some ways, but try to mitigate it. And then what sort of grading do I want? Do I want it to be automated by like a web work system or something like that? Do I want uh, students to have instant feedback on whether the answers are correct? And uh, <laughs> none of us really enjoy grading probably. So do I really want to grade written solutions? Uh, I think for me, the answer is I don't want to, but I, I, I do want to, you know? It's one of those necessary things. Okay. Uh, this out of the way here. So what sort of problems do we have to solve? How are students going to get the exam? How are they going to submit it? Do they have the necessary access that they need? They have the internet, they have the computer, they have the phone, do they have the camera, do they have the scammer, scanner, do they have the tools, the software to convert from images to PDF and so forth. So these were big hurdles at the beginning of the pandemic, but it seems like uh, most of those hurdles are mostly overcome now for most students. And uh, when I was doing this in the spring, I, I came up with this idea that I, I was going to do it on web work and deliver it that way and have students submit it via Moodle. Um, so I decided to make my instructions as clear and as simple as possible. And uh, rather than have time limits, I opted for the more open-ended uh, take-home exam quiz format. Uh, and this also helped students who have testing accommodations and need more time because the time pressures were relieved. Um, and also, you know, are there students in your classes who are disabled or students you don't know are disabled and, or have some sort of disability, particularly visual impairments uh, for math? Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, so the cheating is a big deal and a uh, few things you should be aware of, I think, are, are known, like the Chegg and the Photomath are, and Wolfram Alpha are pretty common. Uh, the Slater.com is sort of new to me and new to others, I think, but students can literally look up textbooks and solutions online at Slater.com. So uh, include that in your arsenal to try to catch cheating. Uh, for the solution that I came up with in, in the spring, I had students uh, get the web work questions uh, and submit their answers for instant feedback and uh, write up their work, their solutions, and submit it via Moodle. And then I would grade the written solutions. So it was kind of a blend of high tech and low tech, with the high tech playing the role of giving the instant feedback that I couldn't do in real time. Okay, so a typical test or quiz would have instructions at the top um, and instructions at the bottom of each question. They would specify what they're allowed to do, uh, what resources they're allowed to use, uh, if they have questions, contact information. Um, and then I would try to maybe turn some questions around. Typically, uh, in a trig inter integrals problem like this, uh, we'd probably uh, use the trig identity in a different direction, but I turned it around to rewrite it as a trig integral, you know, things like that. Uh, sort of doing something that students wouldn't necessarily have done before, but are on par with the level of difficulty that they, uh, in other words, it's, it's, it's in their zone of proximal development. They can do it, right? Uh, the web work 
is there mainly just to present the questions and give them the instant feedback. And it would do some of the grading. I think I split it up 50% of the points were the web work and 50% were the written solutions. And I would randomize the problems as appropriate. Uh, some of the problems, uh, if I randomized them, would be really super hard to grade or just super hard to randomize uh, in a good way. And then they just wouldn't be randomized. But others would be easy to randomize. Um, I provided a lot of scaffolding. So this is another quiz problem. So students would have to sort of write out what their trig substitution was and solve the integral and also share their work with me, their written work later. Um, a lot of the instructions that I gave were to anticipate problems that students would have with uh, entering variables and, and so on and so forth. Um, and maybe some of that scaffolding discourages students from just plugging and chugging into Wolfram Alpha because sure, they could, they could plug this integral into Wolfram Alpha, but that's not gonna tell them what the trig substitution is gonna be. So there's maybe a little bit more incentive to, uh, to do it on their own. Uh, as far as question design, I'll have a few slides on this. Um, you can take traditional questions uh, you know, here's a, here's a trig sub type integral or an integration by parts type integral and, um, or, you know, other methods too. You can have them answer it in web work and sort of check their answer and also show you the work uh, using different methods. So that's one nice thing about the take home format. Uh, you can require them to do the same thing in different ways using different methods. Uh, another thing that I did was to uh, was to rethink about how they're spending their time. So if they're doing a take home test, they're not necessarily going to be spending a lot of time up front studying for the test, but that I think frees me up to think that the time that they would have spent studying will be time that they can actually spend on the exam. So if I ask a more lengthy, detailed, in-depth question that takes them more time, I'm not gonna feel bad about that. Uh, so here's an example of such a question. You can see it's got many parts. Um, it's, it's kind of uh, synth synthetic in the sense that it's asking them to tie many ideas together, uh, talking about convergence uh, numerically and using estimates, uh, um, using the alternating series test uh, estimates to uh, estimate the value of a series to a given accuracy and so forth. Um, and hopefully getting, getting them to answer some questions that they haven't uh, seen in this, uh, in this same way before. Uh, so you can tell that I kind of wrote these myself and in some ways that's good uh, because if they submit this to an online source like Chag or something like that, it should be uh, a lot easier to identify as coming from my test. Um, so that could help for detecting cheating as well. Um, and uh, this format allows for flexibility. Uh, one of the nice things is that students can check their answers um, and show their work. And if, uh, if a particular question like part A lends itself uh, to being better assessed on paper, well, just do it that way. It doesn't have to have a web work answer box for the students. Uh, and also, let's see, in terms of question design, you can ask a series of questions, a sequence of questions, really, um, that are done in different ways. So here's a very symbolic partial fractions question. Um, once they've answered that, you can ask them a word-based question where they have to interpret that in terms of area as an improper integral, and you're not giving them that you know, improper integral set up and everything for them. Uh, you can ask them sort of more conceptual questions like are the integral and the series uh, going to be equal to each other? Um, things like that. So you can get students to explain their answers a bit more, which is nice. And also you can ask them sort of follow-up questions. I like the multiple choice follow-up questions and the intermediate steps, this uh, extra scaffolding. Show me, show me that this geometric series here uh, is the limit of a partial sum, and it's a convergent partial sum in this case. Um, 
Yeah, so kind of traditional stuff, but with a twist. And then when you get to the end of the uh, exam or the quiz or whatever, you should have very explicit instructions about what to do. Uh, remember to press submit answers on all the, the web work stuff so you get the points there and then uh, show all your work and scan it in. And uh, this was the final exam, so have a good summer. Um, I think I think that worked pretty well. I, I honestly don't know um, how much my students cheated, um, but I do know that they showed me plenty of evidence of learning on lots of the problems, and I don't think the cheating was uh, widespread, uh, but you never know unless you really zoom in and look at it. Um, so there are lots of quiz and test options out there. Uh, you can de-randomize web work questions by setting a manual seed. So one, two, three is just some number I chose. You can choose whatever number. Just put that into the text of a web work problem. Uh, sorry, not the text, the, uh, the Perl code part of it. And that'll de-randomize it. It'll be the same uh, numbers for everybody. You could go uh, a completely different direction. You could have no written solutions, do it all online. Uh, as mentioned before, the gateway tests and quizzes are a great option. Uh, you could have a soft deadline, sort of that reduced credit option uh, in web work. There's the just-in-time in time adaptive testing features in web work. These are things I didn't do. Uh, the problem panic, the hints that cost points. So if students don't know how to set up a problem, you can give them the formula, but it's going to cost them some points. Uh, you can have the uh, re-randomization button, uh, so you can have uh, multiple attempts with different uh, randomizations. Uh, you can do essay answers right in web work. Um, and a few things that I've been working on, and this is probably why uh, Mike Gage and others wanted me to present here. Um, you know, it'd be nice if students could upload images to web work problems. Uh, it'd be nice if students could do uh, some freehand written work, uh, such as on whiteboards uh, gathered by web work problems. And so I worked on that a bit over uh, the summer. And they're kind of in, in alpha or beta stage. Uh, they're, they're not uh, production level yet. Uh, but if you want to test them out, I'm happy to share these macros uh, with anybody. Uh, this, this macro right here for uploading images allows students to attach several images. Um, it's just written in JavaScript, basically. Um, the issues with writing macros like this are preserving uh, the image uh, in between when the student presses submit answers and when the page refreshes. So in other words, you have to submit the image to the server and then deliver it back to the student. Um, and then also preserving it between homework session. So if a student logs off and logs back on or goes to a different homework set or whatever and comes back, their image should still be there. And we actually caught a bug um, related to that in June. Mike Gage really found it and fixed it. So if you want to use these uh, features that I'm describing, you really have to um, be running the most recent version of, of web work for that to happen. Um, Right now, it's not very advanced, um, and it's it's uh, very much not ideal. We're essentially taking these images and writing them as base64 strings uh, into the web work database, which isn't designed for that. And images that are too large aren't going to really fit into that database. So long term, we need to essentially uh, figure out a way to have a parallel database just for images if we're going to do this, a separate database. Um, that would really work for that. Uh, the whiteboard stuff, um, embedding a whiteboard into a web work problem. Uh, this works as is with this minimal example um, that I found online and got working uh, this summer. And again, preserving state between sessions and between uh, when you press submit answers and when it refreshes is sort of the tough part. And we figured out both of those uh, issues. And again, the new version of web work is necessary for this to work. Um, and it'd be nice to maybe put a better applet in here than the one that I have right now. It's just a very basic one with some drawing features and you can undo and redo and you can animate the drawing. Um, but it would be nice to be able to insert images so students could label diagrams 
uh, it would be nice to have students uh, have text box features so they could type in things on their solutions rather than handwriting them. Um, uploading photos or inserting photos into the whiteboard would be nice. Um, so there are lots of features we could implement. I think we've figured out some of the web work technical difficulties now. It just would, be, would, be, would really be a matter of getting the, the applet end of the stuff scaled up, uh, perhaps choosing a, a better pre-made applet or uh, finding a really good one out there and extending its features uh, using our own programming skills. Um, I don't know how I'm doing on time, but the uh, one of the things that strikes me about the online testing is that are we really solving the right problem or are we making a, a, a type three error? Are we um, focusing on the wrong thing? Uh, and so on sort of the math Twitter world, uh, some people have pushed back against this uh, teach like a champion uh, method of teaching in the, in the lower secondary schools and so forth, uh, which focuses a lot on behavior management and um, this term carceral pedagogy um, kind of really hit me when I first heard it. It hit me hard, like, oh, are we really uh, overly controlling uh, our students? Um, and anyway, that's just a tangential issue to this, but I do think it's worth thinking about in, in the ways that we uh, expect our students to do their work and show their work. Is it, is it really uh, good to be proctoring them uh, excessively tightly? Um, and a little more on this topic, if you're interested, um, sort of social justice math. Um, I, I really would encourage you to, to watch this video by uh, Benjamin Dickman, who's uh, developing sort of a social justice math algebra course uh, right now. And how do we make math more inclusive and equitable and relevant and uh, the assessment methods that we use certainly play a large, large role in that. Okay, so there are lots of interesting people here to follow. Um, and this slide details some of them. Uh, get involved with, uh, with transforming post-secondary education. Um, you know, a lot of departments are putting out statements about, um, and colleges are putting out statements about supporting their diverse students, uh, but actions really speak louder than words. And I think getting people involved in these projects, uh, especially through very important and established organizations like Tipsy Math uh, is gonna be key moving forward. So I'm sorry if that's a little, a little bit tangential. It's kind of the anti-grading direction in some ways, uh, the ungrading direction. Um, but we really need to think about what our students are learning and what we're teaching them. And uh, so my brother is also a mathematician at Hope College. And uh, he said to me just yesterday, I f it's funny, the students think that they're doing all this work for me. Meaning the important part is the learning, uh, not the getting the answers, not the getting the points and uh, not even showing their professors that they know it. The important part is that they learn it. And we need to really think about uh, uh, what's best for getting those, those students to actually learn the material. And I'm not saying that uh, these assessment methods are wrong. Uh, they certainly work uh, to do certain things. I just wanna make sure that they're doing the right things. Um, I, I wanna thank the conference organizers and uh, many of the important figures who've helped me along the way, like Mike Gage and David Savone and uh, Gavin LaRose. Uh, I, I wouldn't have written nearly as many web work problems as I have or been so involved in the project uh, for so long uh, if it hadn't been for them and many others and countably many others, as I said. <laughs> uh, mathematician. Yeah, I couldn't help the math joke there. Uh, <laughs> So thanks for inviting me. And uh, what questions do you have? Yeah, Paul, uh, this is Ramon. Uh, this is actually, I mean, this is great. Thank you. 
I guess uh, Paul and Paul, uh, uh, they did a wonderful job. Uh, uh, Paul, that's uh, one thing that I want to ask you. Um, when you, I think you said something in your, I, I forget, I thought I wrote it down. Uh, there was a picture, the triangle stuff. Is, is that yours or is it, can someone use that? Can I use that in my class? Uh, this, this yes. I, I don't know where I found it on the internet and I should have popped it into Google uh, image search uh, to do it. Yeah, I would do that. That's what I mean. Just, I'll just try to ask for permission to use it. So, but it's, it's not, it's not yeah. my own. So uh, use it and cite your sources. I should have. Yeah. And I like your brother's um, quote also, which is, uh, which is very good. So uh, most students think that they are, you know, trying to impress you. They are doing the work for you instead of actually trying to learn and make sure they understand the topic at hand. Thank you so much. This, this is great. Thank you. So, so I had a comment. I just want to bring this stuff to Jake's attention, I think, or his, and his people. So my analysis of what happened with the image up upload that Paul was doing, um, everything actually worked pretty well, including putting things in base 64 and, and, and storing images that way inside the database. I did some searching to see if that was a horrible way to do it. And I, I didn't, it didn't seem to be a horrible way. There might be better ways, I don't know. But the main problem was that we were trying to store it in, I think it was in the past answer uh, field. Yeah. And so once you load four pictures from an iPhone into a past answer field, it runs out over the edge of a field. I mean, that's a single field in the database and the, the records just can't be that long. So if we simply were storing those things, uh, I'm not even sure that it has to be in a separate kind of database. I think we just have to have another table that can take things that are that long and we'll store each image separately in a different record with some kind of index thing that allows you to get it back to where, to, to point to it from the past answer field. Because I, I, I thought the, a lot of what you had there was, was really pretty well done. And, and it would be particularly useful, it seems to me, uh, um, the way you were doing your answers where you have a web work part that gets checked automatically and then they have to upload the work. And if you uploaded it in close to the essay field, why it would be all attached together and you could, you could grade it more easily. True. However, uh, uh, I think having them separate is actually beneficial in some ways. Uh, and here's why, because okay. then you're grading the students' exams in Moodle or whatever. Um, you can just go through sequentially and grade them. Um, whereas in web work, there's no, uh, there's no good way to grade essay questions or to grade uh, these image attachment problems right now. We'd have to sort of build something to make that process easy. Uh, yeah, that needs and I, I should... to exist. And I'm not sure uh, it needs to grow in that direction, but others may disagree. Um, I can... I'm sorry to interrupt, but, uh, but we also, okay. uh, maybe we, I know Joe, you're, you're gonna hop in. We could, uh, I think that we should definitely keep iterating on this discussion because we definitely have a lot of thoughts, but I also know that we're running about five or six minutes over. Um, so is it okay if, uh, if we pass it on to, uh, to Adam Gilbert and Snoo? Thank you so much, Paul. That was a great discussion. As with many of these, we could talk about this for so long. So I'm excited to the follow-up 